Hello students, welcome to the new lecture and in this lecture we are going to discuss one topic that is human evolution. In the human evolution we have the two subtopics, they are human evolution of man through ages, human being a moving museum, okay, these are the one topic and two subtopics of the human evolution, okay. So now let us start about our discussion, the first one is the human evolution. So first of all, what is evolution? So in the last class also we have discussed evolution is nothing but evolution is nothing but so accumulation of changes in the organism and these changes will pass to the next generation and the next generation and so on. So such kind of such kind of process is known as evolution. So this evolution is mainly responsible for the changes in the organism. Okay. So here we are saying the human evolution. What is human evolution? In the humans, some changes some changes are getting accumulated so changes will get accumulated and its changes will be passed to the next generation and so on such kind of process of accumulation of changes and passing of these changes from one generation to another another generation to another and so on such kind of process is known as evolution this evolution what it will do it will brings about the changes in the organism and sometimes such kind of evolutions may lead to the formation of new species okay we have discussed how the new species will be formed in the previous classes and so on okay so next the evolutionary process in human beings led to the appearance of modern human being okay so it means in the early man there were some changes were accumulated and these changes accumulation passing to the next generation and generation and so on all this process led to the appearance of the modern man who is modern man modern man is nothing but human beings modern human beings we are the modern human beings okay how we came we came from the accumulation of changes and due to the evolutionary process we appeared in this way okay that we are living present now and having evolutionary history like plants other animals not only human being all animals all plants each and every each and every plant each and every animal every organism and every species have, have such kind of evolutionary history evolutionary history or evolutionary process both are same okay we also have the evolutionary process like plants animals and other things okay so here if you see seven seven lakh fifty thousand years ago about seven lakh fifty thousand years ago the science of man okay science of man that is nothing but homo sapiens here the man we have to use the word man but what does it indicate it, it it indicates both males and females okay it indicates both male human being and also female human beings okay so they appeared around seven lakh fifty thousand years ago okay the first sure fossil of our own species of man indicates the true man appeared around on the earth around 2,50,000 years ago okay so these many years ago around from now to past 2,50,000 years ago we found the first sure fossil of our own species okay that is nothing but man so what is meant by fossil we have discussed fossil is nothing but if any organism is dead so much long period of time ago that will be covered with mud sand etc and most of the organ most of the body parts will get decomposed but some parts will not get decomposed like bones teeth hair etc they will remain as it is and uh, in the future someone will discover some scientist or some other person some will discover that fossil okay such kind of preservation of organism by the nature okay in the sediments is known as a fossil okay first uh, uh, open the open that sentence and see in your notebook okay so we have written that no sentences clearly so first read the sentence you will come to know about it okay and next evolution of man through ages okay evolution how we evolved into modern man till now okay what are the changes so there are many stages like homo habilis homo habilis this species this person lived around 1.6 to 2.5 million years ago so we are using the million what is meant by million 1 million okay 1 million is equal to okay 10 lakhs okay 1 million is equal to 10 lakhs okay so now calculate now 2.5 million is equal to how many lakhs okay so homo habilis lived between 1.6 to 2.5 million years ago so homo, homo erectus okay they lived around 1, 1 to 1.8 million years ago okay so homo sapiens 
Neanderthals, they lived between, okay, they lived between around 40,000, maximum of 40,000 years ago. Next, Homo sapiens, they, the present man, we are the Homo sapiens, appeared about 10,000 years ago and so on. So, this is about the evolution of man. We came from all these stages, Homo habilis, Homo erectus, Homo sapiens and so on. So, Homo sapiens, Neanderthals and also Homo sapiens. We are, we came from all these stages, okay. That is known as evolution of man through ages. These are ages. So, you can see here 1.6 to 2.5, 1.8 to 1.8 million ago, they refers to the stages. Stages are ages of the Homo sapiens, or, uh, of the man, okay. All humans evolved from the common ancestor, okay. And there is no biological basis to human race, example, skin color, etc. So, you might have seen in the history, okay. So, in Indians, Indians also, uh, they showed a lot of uh, discrimination based on the skin color, okay. The skin color, like fair skin people, dark color skin people and so on. Even the uh, Britishers also showed a lot of uh, uh, partiality between the uh, dark color skin people and also white color skin people, only depending upon the skin color. So, what the science says, what the biology says, the biology says that humans evolution have the common ancestor whether you have a fair person skin, a dark color skin, whether you have dark color skin or fair skin or whatever it may be, whether you are uh, whether you are American or Indian or Japanese, whatever it may be, all human beings came from the common ancestor. We have only one common ancestor, okay. That is the, that is said by the biology or science. We have the common ancestor and there is no biological basis to human race. Okay, there is no human race. Example, skin color and uh, other examples also. Okay, all humans originated from the Africa and our genetic footprints can be traced back to the African roots. We all came from the Africa. Okay, from the Africa region. Our genes, okay, or our genetic material can be traced back to the um, uh, American of African roots. African roots means what? African region. Okay, means our genes or our DNA. Okay, if you trace back, they can be brought towards the Africa region. Okay, you might have seen. Okay, you, you might have seen. You have. You might have seen the mitochondrial Eve. What the mitochondrial Eve says about we? The mitochondrial Eve says about that we all came from the Africa. Okay like uh, the mitochondria which is present in your cells okay or in our cells okay all these mitochondria is present or uh, it is came from the african regions means uh, the women okay the women which is present in africa okay so they will pass their mitochondrial genes to their children okay children like male child or female child again they will pass to the next child and so on okay it means whatever the mitochondria it is there it is saying that we all came from the Africa, okay. You don't have to remember all these mitochondrial you why because it is not in the syllabus, okay. But for our for our understanding purpose, we have, I have said the mitochondrial you word, okay. So human beings originated from the Africa and our genetic footprints can be traced back to the African roots. Remember this much, it's it's okay, okay. Some human uh, some humans stayed in the Africa and other left Africa and migrated slowly and spread across the planet. So let us consider this Africa region. So from this Africa region, some people went here, some people went here, some people went here and so on. They migrated. It means migration means what? Moving from one place to another place. Okay, that is known as migration. Why the migration will be done? Migration will be done because of some reasons. Some reasons may be for the nature, of, of, uh, for the food, some, some reason may be, some reason may be for the climate, some reason may be some other opportunities. So, depending upon the various reasons, based upon the various reasons, these people, they have migrated from the Africa to the surrounding regions. Okay, surrounding regions. These regions are nothing but Africa to West, uh, West Asia, to the Central Asia, then Eurasia, then South Asia, again to the East Asia and so on. So, these are the regions where they have migrated, They where they have shown the migration. Okay. Next, they travel down to the islands of Indonesia and Philippines to Australia and they crossed uh, Bering, Isle, Bering Land Bridge and so on. These are the different different regions where they have showed the migration, they moved, okay. Humans were traveling to live their lives best, okay. They did not travel for the enjoyment, they did not travel for the, uh, for the tour or some vacation. Why they have traveled? They to live the best, okay. For their, for their living condition, for the best opportunity, they have moved to the different different places. 
and they could even and and they could and even uh, evolve evolve during the course of evolution so during the course of evolution these many years these many thousands of years they took all these thousands of years for the evolution it means some changes have accumulated in their body and these these changes will be transferred transferred to the next generation and so on this led to the evolution so during this uh, while humans were traveling to live their lives best they could and evolved during the course of time okay so it's our next topic is human being a moving museum what is human being we know that we humans are the human beings okay so man is a human being not only man woman also human being so a moving museum what is museum museum is nothing but a place all different world uh, and all different kinds of rare um, uh, rare objects are kept in a place that is known as museum so we are calling the human being uh, human being as a moving museum why because in our body there are some parts okay that don't have any function but we are we are having such kind of parts those parts are came from the past okay from the thousands of they these uh, parts are coming from the thousands of years uh, till now they are known as in that condition we are known as moving museum now we will see how we are calling the human beings as a moving museum now in this topic okay if you see here during the course of evolution some organs are remained in the organisms but these organs do not have any important role in the biological process okay that is a uh, that is about uh, organs for example let us consider we will take one example so today there is no let us consider you are going to school and there is no biology class today okay will you carry biology textbook and workbook most of the times you will not carry biology textbook workbook and notebook why because it is useless to carry today okay as a result you will leave the textbook workbook notebook everything which is related to the biology at home only okay to reduce the weight of the bag so now here also in our human body if there are some organ some there are some organs they, these organs do not have any function but still we are car still we are carrying that organs in our body so in that condition it is known as vestigial organs okay what are the vestigial organs the appendix in our body appendix is there in our intestine in the in the in our uh, in our elementary canal so in the abdomen region there is a appendix but we do not have any function we are not utilizing the function of the appendix why it is it is not needed but even though appendix is not functioning we are carrying in our abdomen it is a vestigial organ appendix plays important role in herbivores herbivores means what example rabbit cow and so on so in those organisms appendix is important but in our body appendix is not important so example rabbit okay so next is the organs that are not useful in organisms are known as vestigial organs all these are the all these such kind of organ is organs known as vestigial organs what is the difference between organ and organism okay what is organ and organism okay organ means a part okay a part what part any part like brain liver kidney okay etc they are known as part they are known as parts organism means living being okay living being example human being goat donkey cow buffalo etc okay so these organisms have such kind of organs these organs are not useful for the biological process but still they are present in the body those parts are known as vestigial organs okay these organs are not useful in the organism they are known as vestigial organs such kind of presence such kind of presence of vestigial organs in the body this phenomenon is known as this phenomenon of abruptly appearance is known as atavism what is atavism so these organs are present in the body sometimes they will appear suddenly they will appear suddenly that is known as atavism example baby with tail okay so some in some uh, babies newborn babies some ta some uh, tail like appearance small tail like appearance will be present at their back so such kind of uh, process of appearance suddenly is known as atavism okay so human beings are said to be moving museum due to the presence of nearly 180 vestigial organs in human beings there are 80 180 vestigial organs so these 180 vestigial organs are there in our body they are present in our body but we do not we don't use their functions they will not do anything okay but we are carrying those 180 vestigial organs 
okay so those are pinna okay ear pinna okay uh, in your ear there is a pinna soft uh, ear pinna it is not useful next is hair on the skin in your on your skin there is hairs uh, micro small very very tiny hair is present on your skin or on your body so it is not useful to you but it is there next mammary glands in males in males mammary glands are present what are the mammary glands okay mammary glands okay mammary glands are useful for the production of milk okay for the production of milk so if you see in the females the mammary glands are present in the breast the mammary glands are present what are the function of mammary glands in the breast these mammary glands are going to produce the milk and this milk is used to feed the baby when the female when the woman or when the uh, when the female becomes pregnant and she delivers a baby so that newborn baby cannot eat other food material so the milk is utilized for the baby that is known as breastfeeding so mothers will breastfeed their baby so that milk is produced by the mammary glands okay so this is useful in females but in males even though even though they are not going to uh, produce any child but mammary glands are present they are useless in males but such kind of a procedure such kind of a phenomenon is known as uh, it, such kind of method is known as vestigial organs so those, those organs are known as vestigial organs okay so this is about uh, human being a moving museum why we are why the human beings are called moving museum due to the presence of vestigial organs how many 180 vestigial organs example ear pinna hair on the skin memory glands in males and so on so even though memory glands are not function or uh, memory glands don't have any function in males they are present okay such such organs are known as vestigial organs okay I hope this lecture is helpful to you. If you have any doubts or questions and suggestions, post post in the comments box so that I can read and I can answer to your questions or doubts. Okay. And we will discuss the next topic in the next lesson. And from this lecture, the entire chapter is completed. Now again, we will go to the next chapter. Okay.